Good morning. <clears throat> God bless you this morning. Praise God. I want you to see this. This shirt. This hoodie, rather. My cousin made for me. She sell caps, cups, shirts, hoodies, and she do them up and, 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 you know, so for your graduation, your birthday parties, your, 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 your wedding, your whatever, my cousin does this, and she did this for me. This is the fruit of the spirit. Let me see if I can. can. Ah, let me see if I can. I don't know. I don't know. Guess I have to drop it down. So, can you see that? She got my name on, of course. That's the fruit. The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. My cousin. She made this for me. She will make one for you too. Let me give you her information. Her website is Signature Provisions. Signature Provisions dot com. Her telephone number, her name is Vanity Burton. Her telephone number, once I get my glasses on, her telephone number is 901-497-6853 and also 901-619-8193. She do logos and designs and all that kind of thing. Uh, signature provisions 8 at gmail.com. That's her email. All right. God bless you. So contact her. Don't let me call some of your names out. Shay Shay, contact her. Shelly and Renee, contact her. Brenda Alder Lee, contact her. Support her. Praise God. And this is a hoodie. It's warm, too. It's cool outside, so as soon as I get through the video, I'm quiet. I'm going to take my walk. Hallelujah. But contact her, and she will hook you up. And see her, 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 her whole line of things that she do. She got a whole website full of things that she will do for you. All right. Whew. It is hot. <laughs> Woo. All right. Let me get started now. God bless you, Vanity. Bert, my cousin. Sharon McNeil's daughter. Praise God, my cousin. I want to go to YouTube. Got to get comments from YouTube. People ignorant and don't know the scripture. And the reason, look, the reason people, wait a minute, people told the Bible. People got a Bible in their own. People going to church. Scripture up on the big screen. Listen to a preacher. And don't know the word of God. Ignorant of God's word. Because the preacher is teaching them ignorance. All right. Let us. Let me go here. 
You know what the what the true word of God go for? Satan is going to get upset and try to stop it. Just like he did with Jesus and the apostles. And even before Jesus came in the Old Testament, just like they did with the prophets. Uh, and we have two that I'm going to deal with. Let's deal with the first one. The first one come from I'm not going to call the name because they are ignorant. Okay. Don't want to crucify, but give them a chance to hear the word. This come from our lesson Sunday. Our lesson Sunday. This past Sunday, our lesson title was, You Can't Be Christian or Saint on Your Terms. Which you must do it how Jesus said, repent. You know your turn is don't repent. Your turn is not about works. So don't worry about doing no works. So we got this letter from a gentleman. And I will not call the name. You know, you know some folks are ignorant, so you don't want them. And just for the record, when I call you a false prophet, you know the truth. You're not in error. You're not ignorant. You know the truth, but you continue to preach error and preach lies that make you a false prophet. And this gentleman said, I, and we want to take time and educate, do really what the pastor should be doing. He said, no man can say he have no sin. No man can say he have not sin. Well, nobody can say they have not sin. Now, the scripture he's, he's going to is, because uh, 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 all have sin. Okay, past tense. What you a, what you a Christian for you still sin? Didn't you repent? Why are you still sinning? No man can say he had no sin. First John 1 and 8 says, listen, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Watch this. Back up to First John 1 and 6 and see what they're talking about. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. First John 1 7. The blood of Jesus Christ clears up from all unrighteousness. So if you clean from all, how do you still got it when you clean from all? First John 1 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful. He, not me, but he, the Son of God. He is faithful to forgive us our sin that to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I think gave the scripture. Believe the scripture. Now, what happens if people have mixed, that's why I say so often, don't you bring me nobody to come and tell you. They mix their thoughts and ideas and their thoughts are sinful. In with the scripture. I didn't gave you scripture. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then he say, you may have repented. But the flesh is still corrupted. Yes, the flesh is still corrupted. That's why the flesh will be changed when Jesus comes. Because flesh and blood, 
cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. We shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Of course our flesh is corrupt. That's why, that's why we get sick. That's why we have arthritis. That's why we catch cold. That's why some are called COVID. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why we have heart trouble and headaches and migraine and uh, 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 heart burning, acid reflux, and hallelujah, and clogged lottery, and ulcers. And we worry and stress. Of course, this flesh is corrupt. Of course, it is. But it, but but because our flesh is corrupt, that don't mean that we commit sin. The scripture said in the book of Galatians, walk in the spirit, chapter five. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh if you walk in the spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. Ain't no Holy Spirit telling you to sin. Not one Holy Spirit tell you. The, the Holy Spirit is not telling you to sin. Jesus is not telling you to sin. Scripture don't tell you to sin. God don't tell you to sin. The apostle never told you to sin. The prophet never told you to sin. They said don't. Don't do it. But man put his stuff in there. Come on. Come on. Watch it. We are soul on the sin. Yes, we are soul on the sin. <laughs> That's why Jesus said you must be born again. Born again. We're born in sin. That's why Jesus said, Very, very, you must be born again of water and of spirit. God's spirit don't lead you to sin. The Holy Ghost don't lead you to sin. Some of you so called ignorant holy folk say y'all feel with the Holy Ghost speaking of the Holy Spirit. Give up it. Uh, the scripture says the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you to all truth. So when you sin, that means you disobey. Now own up to your disobedience and repent of your sin. Repent and stop being disobedient. The scripture say the wrath of God come on to you disobedience. There you go on the So though we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh, when you commit sin, you fulfill the lust of the flesh. Go to, 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 to Galatians chapter 5. I want to take my time and hallelujah. Give you some good doctrine. Straight from scriptures. See, scriptures don't say what y'all said. Galatians chapter 5. At verse 16, this I say, they walk in the spirit and we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. But you said, so though we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh, we still commit the works of the flesh. When you commit the works of the flesh, you fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you commit the works of the flesh, which is sin. Now back to the Bible. Verse 17, Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary one to another. So that ye cannot do the thing that you would. That's in there too. He he got that scripture in there too. But he added, he left out some. 
But, verse 18, but, it's a but there. But if we be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Led of the Spirit of God. Remember the law showed to your sin. That's why you had to keep bringing sacrifice. The law could never take away your sin. But Jesus Christ, his blood cleansed us from all sin. His blood in front of remission of sin. He said that. He told us to pre repentant and of sin. All right. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. It's manifest. How is it manifest? You doing it. Which are these? The judge of the case unclear. Give you a whole list of things. That's the work of the flesh. You doing the works of the flesh? You sin and you disobedient and you you come here. You ain't led by the spirit, fulfilling lust of the flesh. You ain't led by the spirit, sinning. You disobedient to the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right. Then verse 21, he lets you know you do the old thing. Though you do such thing, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God if you do the old thing. And the old thing is sin. Now you better stop doing it. Remember, Jesus going to say that day, that's the same chapter of the book of Matthew. Uh, that part for me, you that work iniquity. Now you better stop. You better stop it now. Now, watch it. We still commit the works of faith from time to time. That because you disobedient. God said, Jesus said, Scripture said, Holy Ghost said, don't commit the works of the flesh. Jesus said, go say it no more. Not even one time. Why you say it? You bet not say Jesus let you say it. You better not say that. You're disobedient. If you are born of God, you commit no sin. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Though you fall short and commit the works of the flesh. We just read what scripture said. Scripture say you fall short and commit the works of the flesh. You fall short and commit the works of the flesh when you disobey. When you commit the works of the flesh, you walk out of the flesh. You yield it to the flesh. Let you watch it. Watch it. Go to Romans 6. Hallelujah. 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 Robert 6. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You don't believe the scripture. Romans 6. So you don't believe the scripture. I want verse 15. What then shall we sin? This scripture talking now. Because we are not under the law, but under grace. And the answer is, God forbid. No. No, don't you know this? Let you that think, let me, let me, let the scripture educate you. Know ye not that whom you yield yourself service to obey his service ye are to whom you obey now what did you obey when you sin and fail shall whether of sin unto death you obey sin when you sin why you obey sin wait or of obedience unto righteousness you obey God, you'll do right. All the time. Lay the blame on you when you fall short. 
that's not the doctrine of Jesus, that you disobeying the doctrine. Now you don't want nobody to fall short. Ain't that right? Hold on, wait. You watching me. How many of you ever been done wrong? Somebody done you wrong. God didn't tell them to do that. How many of you people stole from? How many of you got loved one people have killed? How many of you wife and husband walked walked away from you? How many people you got people that tore up your happy home? How many children rebellious and disobedient, hard headed? Jesus didn't tell them to do that. How many rape your daughter, kill your grandma, carjack you, molesting your children? Jesus didn't tell them to do that. So, so if, if you confront them, they can they can make that same excuse. Well, you know we fall short from time to time. Yes, but we fall short from time to time. You see that? You won't even accept their excuse. This is all right now. If time won't permit me, but it be along the same lines, hallelujah. To get to the other level, but it's along the same line. Watch it. Now we back to the Lamb took the sin out of the world already. Don't no Bible nowhere say that. Don't no Bible say the Lamb took the sin out of the world already. No Bible say that. If that's the case. Why would he burn up? Destroy this world. If that's the okay. case. Why is this world going to be burned up? If that's the okay. case. Hallelujah. All right. So none of us sin. If you sin, you sin. Don't be a hypocrite. If you sin, you sin. And not stop your sin. Go and sin no more, just like Jesus said. But we all have the nature of sin in our flesh. Wait a minute. We have the nature of Christ. Uncorruptible. The nature of Christ. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We have Christ's nature with the new birth. If you're born again, if you have repented of your sin, if you have called on Jesus Christ to save you from your sin. We have the nature of Christ, the spirit of Christ. The scriptures say, he who have not the spirit of Christ is none of his. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I want Romans 6 and 6. Nor did that the old man, this is the sin nature, nor did that the old man be crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, from now on, we should not serve sin. Wait a minute. He did it dead and free from sin. Dead in Christ. Dead to sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just read you the scripture. Hallelujah. Glory. Then 6 and 1 says, shall we continue seeing the great man about God for me? Then Titus 2 and 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Had to be in all men, teaching us that the nine world and ungodly Lord. That was grace do. What said about great done much more about. Eh? Hallelujah. Grace tell you, don't see it. Grace tell you, Repent. 
Now let's get back to the left. If you're born of God, you can you commit no sin, though though you fall short and commit the work of flesh. Well, scripture has proved that wrong. If you fall short, that's on you. Remember, now I want the help there is able to keep up and fall. Wait, 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 wait. Remember in the book of Ephesians, put on the whole arm of God that you may uh, be able to stand against the wiles of a devil. And having done all to stand, stand there for when you sin, you didn't stand, you failed. And you didn't have to. Put the blame where it lies. Just say, I, I failed God. I messed up. All right. But we all have the nature of sin in our flesh. We just dispel that. Now, now you both crucify your flesh. What, what scripture say? Mortify the deeds. I think that's in Romans 2, 6. Six twelve. Let not say that will reign in your mortal body. When it get in your mind, get it out of it. Resist the devil. How about what about resisting the devil? Whew. That might be important. Hold on. I can pause. All right. Okay, we're back. Hallelujah. Watch it. Let not say the devil reign your mortal body. Then you should obey the lust thereof. Get it out of your mind. Get it out of your eyes. Be careful what you look at. Be careful what you think about. If you dwell on it, you're going to do it. If David had a Went on about his business and left Bathsheba blah, 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 alone. Though he saw her by accident, some say on purpose, whatever. Leave it alone, he should have went on by his business. But he didn't do that. He didn't do it. He pursued her. He obeyed the sin. He didn't have to do that. And God punished him for that. And y'all tell the folks to see it. Verse 13, 613, Romans. Neither yield your members as instruments to unrighteousness. When you sin, you yield it to sin. Watch it. But yield yourself to God. Now let's get back to the left. Time won't permit me to get the other gentleman, but it's along the same line. And by grace through faith, we, we are saying that's right, it's grace through faith. And we already told you, grace tell you to deny ungodly and worldly lust. Hallelujah. Faith come by hearing the word of God. Well, you reject the word of God. You didn't hear the word of God. Because you saying we sin. Don't the word of God tell you to sin. You didn't take the word of God. You didn't repent. You didn't hear the word of God. You didn't repent. You didn't hear the word of God. The word of God say the blood of Jesus cleared up all the right. Jesus said this is the blood of the New Testament with the shed for men for the remission of sin. Take away all your sin. But you said ain't no no no, no without sin. You didn't hear the word of God. That really you don't have faith because you don't you didn't hear no word of God. Ain't no faith, ain't no word of God telling you to see it. Where do you get that lie from? Yeah. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Let go to the 15th chapter and show you your mouth speaking what's in your heart. I want Matthew chapter 15. This is long, but it works. Well, 
Watch it. Watch it. Look what Jesus said about the heart. Matthew 15, 19. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man that come from your heart. Okay. Let me get this out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaking. Let me get that. It's long, but it's good, God knows. Here it is, Luke 6, 45. Luke 6, 45. My God today. For a, a good man out of the good trade of his heart, bring forth that which is good. Now you bring forth sin. Sin ain't good. Watch it. And the evil man out of the evil trade of his heart, bring forth that which is evil. You bring forth sin, that's evil. Well, I don't know the volume of the heart of the mouth speaking. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to, to, to the level. Good, good level. It is by your words which which he testify you are saved. No, it ain't by your word, it's by your actions too. Confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the mouth confession made of salvation, watch it. But with the heart, man believe it unto righteousness. That means you believe Christ to make you righteous. You ain't righteous committing sin. Go to First John chapter three. Don't let nobody deceive you. He that commits sin is of a devil. He that is righteous. He that doing righteousness is righteous. That First John chapter three. If the righteous scared to be saved, where shall the sinner on God appear? See you see the heart, your heart ain't right. If your heart is right, you believe God to make Jesus to make you right. You believe Jesus to take away all your sin. How you right and you sin it. Otherwise, we will boast of our works that we have done in our flesh. Where that found that in the Bible. I I here here's here's, a, here's boasting in your works. In the seventh chapter of the book of Matthew. Jesus said that they not they want to sell me low low sell in, but he'll do with my father. Men gonna say that day. That be, uh, Matthew chapter said, Jesus said, Men gonna say that day. We did this in your name, we did many ones works in your name. So he's gonna say, Depart me, you that work in there. Yeah, you both near your way, and you are a hypocrite. Jesus said, Do not your honor be seen to me. Don't, they love to make long prayers to be heard of me. Yeah, yeah. that both of your way, hypocrite, and you ain't saved. You work in iniquity, and both about what you're doing, but you work in iniquity. See there? How about I make my boast in the Lord? See, 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 that's the, see, that's what the false prophet put in there. Hallelujah. Your work didn't save you. That both in your work. My work saved me. No, your work didn't save you. Jesus saved you. Your work, your ties and all. The works of the law didn't save you. Jesus saved you. You repented of your sin. 
<laughs> Ephesians 2.10. We him workmanship created unto him unto good works. We are born of God by spirit, by spirit with spirit, not born of spirit with flesh. That's true. For it is written, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another, so that you could not do the thing uh, you would. Those who commit sin are under the law. True. So as it is written, if you be led of the spirit, you are not on the law. You are not led on the spirit of sin. That's enough. Time won't permit me to get to the other level. But it was along the same line. Hallelujah. And I'm going to uh, share this later on. All right. God bless you. Thank you for being